This is Leah from Flow Acrylic. Today I'm going to be doing a black and white pour uh, just to see how the colors react. So this is pre-primed masonite. You see this little blemish right here. Um, I did several boards at the same time and put them, I thought they were dry enough, but they were close to each other and pulled that off. So that's one of the things to be careful about. You can get pre-primed gesso. I can put that in the, in the description, but um, what we can do is just cover that over. Um, it won't be a problem because this whole thing's going to be coated with thick acrylic paint. So today I've got white and black and I'm going to try to not actually mix these colors too much and see what we get. So let's see. I haven't actually planned this out very well, um, but I'm thinking I might actually pour at a tilt with the black. So I'm just going to start with this. This is just plain white acrylic paint that has been watered down with water. Surprise, surprise. And I'm just going to spread that along. I don't want too much gray in this painting, so I'm not sure that I'll do a what they call a dirty pour where you put it all in the same cup or if I'll just put it directly on the canvas but I'm glad I found my palette knife. Palette knives are nice to make kind of interesting texture. Um, I think it also, using a palette knife, gives it like that artsy fartsy feel. I can't remember if Cezanne painted with a palette knife or if it was just like when the invention of the square paintbrush came out, but it has that like chunky, modern painting feel to me when I use a palette knife. So you can see I've covered up pretty much all of that gesso underneath. I don't want a really flat uniform look. I am going to try some spray paint gesso. I can put that in the little notes below. But uh, painting it was a pain in the butt and I am going to want some that are really, really smooth and it's just going to be easier to do it that way. So I'll let you know. I'll do a video on, it's a company called Krylon. You probably know them because they make lots of different spray paints, but they, they make a spray on gesso. So I'm going to see how that works out. Okay. So I've done my, my canvas. Um, this is pretty thick. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to my black. Just a little bit. Normally it's nice to put it in a cup and to stir it so you can see what's going on. And I do recommend that, but I'm in a hurry today, so I'm just gonna take my chances. Here's my white, which I'm gonna add a little bit more silicone oil to. Just a little squirt. And a little bit of this white back in here. These little bottles are actually from the craft store. People use them for cake decorating and making candies and stuff, but I found that they, they work pretty well. Okay. I really don't know what I'm going to do here. Um, okay. I'm going to do some puddles. I'm going to do big ones so that there's not too much mixing. I'll start some more over here. Boop. Okay, um, I'm going to break up these cells a little bit by running my knife through. The girl that I really like, Melly D. Artist, she actually runs her finger through it. 
but because this canvas is so small, I'm going to hold off on that. Okay, so I'm going to pour down this way, just a little bit. Actually, let me use this palette knife to kind of, you can sort of influence the way that the paint goes by just giving it a pathway. Sorry if you can't see this. So I don't want it to look like super droopy. All right, I'm gonna use a little straw. You can use just any straw. It doesn't, this is just a little bottle insert that I have. Like I said, I want to keep some of that black. I don't want it like really, really soupy. So that's tough. It's tough to achieve that. Oh, you can see this. So there's some kind of gray, crazy stuff going on. I wish I could extend out this white a little bit more. Sometimes you can do that by how this is going to turn out. Maybe I've already fiddled with it too much. There's some kind of cool cells going on there. I like want to drag, drag some of this down a little bit more. The thing with flow acrylic painting is it changes so much as it dries that it might look kind of plain when it's wet, but you give it a half an hour and it has like exploded. So I might be meddling with this too much, but um, the good thing is this paint is thick, so it's not gonna move around as much. I'm gonna swipe some white in there. Let that. See how that influences it. You know, I might just leave this as is I really want to spread that out more, but yeah, see as I'm spreading it, it's not just spreading the black. So what I can do is kind of give, give the black somewhere to go by giving it kind of this puddle of paint and then, and then I can kind of manipulate it to maybe grab some of these white strands and pull them in into this little black area. I love black and white because for me, my imagination just kind of goes wild with things that it looks like. I like paintings that I can just endlessly stare at and find little you know, faces or animals, kind of like when you stare at clouds. So I like, I like some of the things going on here because it, they're just sort of fun to, like the ink blot, what's his buckets, ink, ink blots. Okay. So I have like a weird story about finding faces and things. When I was pregnant with my first daughter, I was really sick and I would lay in bed and my husband put up a blanket over the window so it would be easier for me to rest. And as I stared at it, there was this section that looked like Mark Twain's face. And I still remember the day I was laying in bed and he like, it was a nice spring day, so he, he went to pull off the blanket and I was like, no, Mark Twain, because <laughs> I knew he'd never, Put it up in the exact same way that I'd be able to see it again. I, I definitely felt like 
Tom Hanks on Castaway when, like, you know, with Wilson. So, like, the face of Mark Twain looked over me those months of my pregnancy. Anyways, weird story, but yeah. Let me know if you like weird stories and I'll tell them while I paint, but if not, then I'll just keep it strictly art. I think there's some cool stuff going on here. I do want, like, just a little bit. Oh, is this gonna be bad? I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna try this. Oops. Haha. <laughs> Helps when you open it. This is silicone oil. I'm gonna do this and see what happens. Whoa. Okay, I might super regret that right there, buddy. But I don't know. It's kind of doing something, right? Hmm. All of this is just really experimental. Oh, look at that. Let's just do a painting of that, where we like pour paint on the canvas and then just like add silicone oil and then add straight color to it. That might be super cool. See, this almost feels like a totally different painting to me, but it'll hopefully change over time and, and it won't clash. I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm not gonna fiddle with that. Other than perhaps when this is drier, it might come through and kind of fill in a little bit more white, because, uh, yeah. And this, mm, I wanna use my palette knife, but it's pretty dirty. Yeah, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get black on that and then regret it. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's the second one in the series. I'll try to put a link to the first one so you can watch this process. But thanks for watching. This is Leah from flowacrylic.com.